All right. Welcome to another Pro Football Doc podcast. Almost post week 11, headed into week 12, Thanksgiving week. And here with the usual suspects, Jacob and Taylor. Justin is remote, but the uh, Jacob and Taylor are actually just sitting in the room there across right. from me. So you see me looking up and over. Um, I guess we should get a third, another camera that has us all in the room. I don't know. In the quote, war room, command center, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I think it's kind of cool to have three games. I like the Thanksgiving stuff. Yes, I do like it. And uh, of course, you're Taylor. You're all over the World Cup everywhere. You yes, know, different kind of football. Yeah, football and football, <laughs> yes. and uh, all all over it. Lots of lots of different coverage. All right, lots to talk about this week. Where do you want to go, Jacob? Yeah, let's hit some big names. Um, also relevant for the uh, Thanksgiving game, but the biggest news of the day is Kyle Pitts with the torn MCL. We saw him take the direct hit on the knee with the the right leg planted, so didn't look good. This might have been the the best. Not the best case scenario. MCL sprain probably would have been the best case, but how long is he looking at with the torn MCL? Well, we knew that it was, I'm not going to name the reporter, but yesterday there was a report of no ligaments torn. And we were in the room like, okay, we get ACL not torn. And we were like hopeful that it wouldn't be torn from the direct contact, but there's no way the MCL wasn't torn. Now, a sprain is a tear. It's a matter of degree. This is reporting supposed to be a high grade. And remember, he jogged, walked off straight line. And you can do straight line right. with an MCL. You just can't cut. Look, I think he probably has a bone bruise, too, in an MCL. I mean, uh, I'm a little surprised that he needs surgery. Okay. That usually doesn't. Um, I think, I think they MCL, said he's right? getting a second opinion before deciding. Okay. But you said isolated MCL doesn't normally need surgery. Typically, no. Isolated MCL typically does not. I suppose a high grade maybe, but typically not. We'll see. Uh, look, as we said in the command center yesterday, this is a significant knee injury. He's not back for a while. Look, uh, fully expect IR. And will he come back this season? Let's see. We're week 11 on week 12. We've got seven weeks left. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the Falcons are probably be eliminated by that time. Everyone's in the hunt in the NFC South, actually, because no oh, okay. one, everyone, I mean, Tampa Bay is the best record at like 500. So, oh, okay. Well, never mind. Atlanta's still in it now. Uh, then for uh, the next few weeks, we'll see how it shakes out. But yeah, it's because Tampa Bay isn't leading like usual, right? So yeah, it's yeah. a little bit more open division. Well, that was one of our favorite little things of the week. Okay. They ended up having to eke it out, but Atlanta, you know, uh, uh, over. A Bears defense that actually played better, I guess. I mean, they were giving up 38 points a game. Well, it always right come down from that, right? Yeah. <laughs> you can't always give up that many, but yeah. yeah. Well, that's the next one uh, we saw in, in the war room that Justin Fields... Uh, same game, yeah. Yeah, same game that Justin Fields wasn't really using his running opportunities in the second half. Uh, appeared a little little slow, and he said after the game his hamstrings were cramping up. Yeah, and 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 that's the advantage of what the command center war room's all about, right? When there's eight games going on, I, I can't follow eight games. But uh, one of our guys, Crafty, said that uh, Justin Fields is turning down multiple running opportunities in the second half. Which he hasn't done in the last five weeks, right? <laughs> which made us look at that. And uh, then we saw a video and we tweeted out about uh, the uh, their gun on the right, right, but mm-hmm. holding the left. Right. That's why we thought maybe more cramps and hamstring. But he clearly turned down uh, runs. What was the stats again you had? You had the stats. Yeah, the- I'll pull it up real quick. He had four rushes in the second half for 12 yards and and was sacked three times. So that's definitely not usual Justin Fields numbers. In the first half, he had like 12 rushes for 73, something around that. Yeah. Range. So he was, his usage went down the whole thing. And and on the play, he got hurt. You can go to the Twitter timeline or SICscore.com to see it. That was like 75% speed as he right. went to the sideline. Then he got caught and thrown down on his left shoulder. Um, here's a take on it and uh don't know it's been released yet okay it's not the shoulder joint like glenohumeral joint ball and socket joint it's also his non-throwing shoulder ac joint sprain or a separated shoulder i can't tell you is it grade one two or three it's painful and we saw him going for x-rays which are normal now it's possible the end of the collarbone is elevated slightly but there's not going to be a fracture with that I strongly believe that Justin Fields will play this next week and be effective. 
Um, Good news, it's not on a Thanksgiving yeah. day, right? Usually the Bears play on Thursday. There's Sunday against the Jets, so yeah, they they. I think he plays, um, and he won't practice much, but I think he plays. A, it's a non-throwing shoulder. B, I don't know Justin Fields well enough to to know how much not practicing affects him. I would actually think it probably doesn't affect him a lot. He seems like a gamer, but also if having the shoulder numb isn't going to affect him, his legs, he's going to still be able to run and make those plays. Right. Well, you, so, talked, you talked about uh, his rib injury in the past in college, how he was willing to get it, uh, get that injection and, and play through. So, yeah, we wrote about it prior to, to six core. We, he, they popped up the sideline tent, didn't even go for an x-ray. They got his rib numbed when he was at Ohio state and he returned and played very well. And I think there was even some controversy about that, but we're like, no, that, I mean, so he's willing to take the injection and play. Uh, I think he's tough. I, I think he'll do fine. I mean, he's not a timing quarterback that way anyways. He's a very athletic, multidimensional QB. And uh, Is there any risk of him getting hit on that non-throwing shoulder and causing further damage, anything like that, while he's rushing? Um, okay, the reason why you can inject the AC joint with impunity is you can't do that to the glenohumeral joint because that's the actually articular joint. So if you have a, a lot of weightlifters have this, but if you have a bad chronic AC joint, what's the surgery? Yeah, cut out the end of the collarbone so it doesn't rub. That's right. So if you inject the AC joint and it somehow destroys the joint, your solution is to resect the end yeah. of the bone anyways. Right. Now, this is why you cannot inject knee joints to play, ankle joints to play, shoulder joints. This is not shoulder joints. It's shoulder, but not the actual main shoulder joint. So right. that's why I think it's safe to do that, and he will. Um, I talked about it with a beat reporter. I mean, we talked about it before. Uh, maybe Justin can put up the link. Uh, we'll put it somewhere, but... I had permission to write this article, but when Drew Brees retired, I asked Drew, you okay if I write this article and give out the details? And he said, fine. You always have to ask before and and whatever. So when Drew Brees was in his third year and Phillip Rivers was already drafted, the trade giants, he was, his agent had him hold out. So Drew was starting. Now you're going to fact check me on this, but go ahead, <laughs> fact check me. This is my memory. I do know this. It's the year, my first year winning the division, 12 and 4. And we clinched the division in Cleveland. It's memorable because of that. Right. And Drew B was the starting quarterback. And prior to that, Drew wasn't dominant. That's why we drafted. I mean, Doug Flutie and he were kind of battling it out a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, but I think we started the year, The I think it was the fourth game of the year, was at home against the Tennessee Titans. So Drew Brees' third year, Taylor's busy Googling, and he's going to correct me right now. <laughs> but I'd like to know. I don't know. This is just my memory. We were one and two, I believe, at the time. And here he's looking again. <laughs> and there was already stories of, like, play Phillip Rivers. This is the Mike McCoy year you had, right? No. 2015, you said? No, no. Drew Brees' third year in the league. Oh, okay. Third year in the league with us, with the San Diego Chargers. Mm -hmm. Whatever year that – Phillip Rivers' first year, whatever that was in the league, whatever draft year that was. He goes down on the sideline. Not on the sideline. Third down, he gets dumped on his left shoulder. And I see that he's hurting. I go check on him. You all right? Yeah, I'm fine. Your shoulder, left shoulder. I'm fine. I'm fine. All right. I'm not trying to bug a guy. And uh, I still remember Doug Flutie taps me on the shoulder and says, Drew hurt his shoulder. I said, I know. He doesn't want me to look at it. <laughs> Drew, let's look at it. Drew, let's look at it. No, I'm fine. I'm not leaving this game. I'm fine. I'm fine. It's my left shoulder, non-throwing shoulder. I'm fine. And I sort of reach underneath and see, oh, yeah, it's, he's got the step off. He's got an AC joint spring. And so I said, okay, um, let's eat. We got to inject this so you don't feel pain. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to play. Because nah, I'm fine. It's my left shoulder. I'm fine. I'm not coming out of this game. And uh, I said, all right, reach out and try and hand the ball off with your left hand. 
oh, he couldn't do it. I said, <laughs> you're going to run right all day? I mean, come on. And because I'm not coming out of this game. I said, you won't have to. Because he knew if Rivers entered, it might be the end for him, right? right? And uh, so I got my assistant. I told him, get the injection, 1122, whatever our code. Get everything. Meet me in the tunnel. So he ran. And I told the athletic trainer what we were doing. And he was going to tell the coaches so that people don't freak out. We ran off into the tunnel. And uh, I told the one security guard, nobody comes in here. I told my assistant, go tell the other security guard, nobody comes in here. And literally, we cleaned his shoulder and we injected his left shoulder right there and then. Came back. I believe it was a three and out. He did not miss a play. We ended up coming back to win that Tennessee game. Every game the rest of the season, he got an injection. <laughs> After four or five weeks, I'm like, Drew, you don't need this anymore. He goes, uh, I don't want to think about it. What if I get hit again? And every 2004, game, yep. 2004, yep. okay. And was the Titans? They were one and two, correct, and it's Titans, all that stuff. Yes! <laughs> when I was silent, I had it here. I was just, you were doing, you are telling the story, so. <laughs> That's the fact check, cl yes. clean sweep. Yes. That's a good one. You were one and uh, two, and you played Titans, and you did come back and beat the Titans. And yes, if you Google San Diego Union Tribune, you'll see a story that talked about maybe it's time to play Rivers ahead of that game. <laughs> oh, because that was going to happen eventually. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It all ties together. Yes! <laughs> I'm not old yet. Yes. You're <laughs> but, <dead. laughs> but anyways, yeah, we got, so Every single game the rest of the year, huh? Even the playoffs too? Playoffs too? Yep. Just like, wow. He just made him feel it. good. Just made him, yeah. Uh, he didn't <laughs> want to think about it. Yep. I mean, and, and in some ways he's right. What if he gets dumped on the shoulder after first down or third down? And he's right. like, yeah. okay, I don't want to deal with it. Right. So we just had a nice little pregame ritual. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I'm very confident that Justin Fields can do this too. And run. Drew didn't run that much, but Justin should be able to run. That's he what I was going to ask you. Right. We're going to um, do a little betting segment later, but do is that something you look at next um, this week? Is his rushing rushing? Is it going to go down or up? Right. Like, well, I mean, you know, I'm not the gambling guy. It depends yeah. on his numbers, right? If his numbers yeah. go down quite a bit, rushing, yeah, they press it a little I, bit. I yeah, he, he, I think he'll be fine. Mm -hmm. the, my biggest worry is, what is, I mean, some people need to practice to play. He's younger. He's not a he's not a Roger, he's not a Brady, right? So in general, younger guys need to practice and play. Right. But he's so athletic and he makes plays more, I think, off his fly, yeah. athleticism mm -hmm. than pure scheme. So maybe it affects him less. I, I I don't know. I don't know him. There are certain players. I mean, Philip Rivers did not need to practice to play. He was gonna be fine. The, the ACL, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or in general, right? In general, but yeah. well, some he had quarter, the, toe, the toe injury, right? He yeah, didn't practice some, at all. Yeah. yeah, some guys do need to practice to play. He mm -hmm. didn't. I, I don't know what Justin Fields is. I don't know what kind of quarterback he. he but I lean towards he may not need to fully practice to. Does play. the new coaching regime matter at all? Like, is that like they got to treat him differently, or just this is how I a coach treats injuries because they have that Matt Eberflus first year dealing with that? Maybe. Yeah, who's the backup there? The backup. Uh, who's the backup? I don't know who the backup is. <laughs> <laughs> Stumped it was, you. It was Dalton last Simeon? year. Is it? Simeon, yeah, because he was, uh, yeah, I think so it was is. Simeon, yeah, it was Dalton last year. Stumped you. No, yes. uh, I'm just saying. I mean. They don't want him in. So, yeah. <laughs> I don't even know if Eberflus knows who the backup is. It's all just Fields. <laughs> 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 right. Oh, I'm quite sure he does. Yeah. But in any case, uh, Justin Fields has done very well, especially for fantasy people that have him, right? Absolutely. But he's, he's killing it. Right. So, anyways, so I'm fully confident he'll play, but he probably won't practice. Okay. Another big or quarterback practice. injury from this week: Matthew Stafford left for a concussion evaluation after the game. Is kind of getting into the coach speak segment later on, but uh, McVay said they weren't sure if they're putting him in concussion protocol yet. Didn't exactly say what he was, what the results of the evaluation were, but they said they're gonna play it cautious and do the right thing for him. Yeah, I, I went strange, right? The previous week he was put in late, Tuesday, Wednesday, mm -hmm. and McVeigh never admitted to a concussion. Right. And it felt like to me that they were trying to slide him back into last week's the game, right. which they didn't. Uh, but then he cleared by Wednesday, and now there's a question again. Right. I mean, two in a row, there's going to be a lot of scrutiny there. There's going to be a lot of st scrutiny on the independent neuro, scrutiny on the team. Uh, I'd have to say it's probably not Matthew Stafford. I don't even know who the Rams play, but it's probably not Matthew Stafford. That's, That's interesting too, because Darisol did the same thing. He had the concussion last week. They do this little—I don't know—I want to say, but like it just seems like 
it's like they're faking stuff or they're not really stealing information. It's just and then, not clarity. It's just no one, no one will come out and say, yes, he had a concussion. Yes, but the sips have subsided and he's good to go. Same with the Tua thing. I feel like multiple times this year that someone's got a concussion the day that that week they came back. Like it's happening a lot more than I think than normal. I know we've been doing this for three, four or five years. We can get those little trends going, but it seems interesting that's happened a lot. They're trying to protect them, but this is the second two times it happened this week that guy got a concussion two straight weeks or protocol, right? Yeah, we'll see. But at this point, I think he's unlikely to play this week. And he said Wolford is still hurt as well, so they might have to go to the third string. Right. Bryce Wolford Perkins. has a concussion. He is a neck inactive. Neck. So yeah. Bryce Perkins was the only other quarterback active. Interesting. But it's, not, it's not bad, but... <laughs> not great. Well, they're, they're three and seven. Cooper Cup is is an interesting one to watch, too. If they don't win a couple games, he's probably done for the season, as we uh, projected on the website. Six score.com. So Super Bowl so. hangover, right? Yeah. You got I five mean, and five bucks. I mean, he is their, not. Their offensive I mean, line situation keeps getting worse. They lost another tackle in yeah. the game. So Cooper Cup got hurt in week 10. The earliest he comes back is week 17. Right. Okay. And that means they need to figure I mean, some other stuff out for it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. That's why I say he may not. Uh, but Cup's tough. He probably would want to play, but uh, they may protect him from himself. Let's uh, jump into the Thanksgiving games. Um, right. Got Let's a go. good, good slate. Buffalo against Detroit is the the early game. Uh, not much injury concerns with that. Uh, Jeff Akuda, the uh, Detroit number one corner, got a concussion, and he's um, not going to make it back for the game. Uh, Josh Allen still with the elbow. He kind of had a dud of a game: eighteen for twenty seven, one hundred ninety seven yards, one touchdown, two sacks, and only three rushes for seven yards. Look like the Browns did a better job than the Vikings of getting pressure on him and making him uncomfortable in the pocket. What well, a question was that, Doc? Um... I know you're doing um, the, yep. what's uh, Allen. Um, I know he looked good, decent, right, in his first game back. Is it soreness and stuff coming from the second week? Yeah. We had that question in the room um, yeah. on Sunday. And, and I apologize. Uh, you're busier than us. Sorry. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking at this. People are calling me. I mean, uh, you guys know I, I don't throw any reporters under the bus. For sure. <laughs> I do get a bunch of calls from, <laughs> <laughs> what about this? What's this, that, the other? It's a busy week, Doc. I mean, There's a lot of, it's, lot it's of injury fun. questions. But, uh, man, man. I'm not, unless unless that reporter or whatever gives me permission, to, yeah. I'm not, yeah. you know. No, for sure. Um, anyways. Um, You're talking Josh Allen. Is it? Is there any lingering soreness with that elbow? Is it just, just him? Like there's a big dip. A hundred percent. Yeah. There you go. Yes. That's what okay. we're waiting for. <laughs> um, look. I'm not trying to cover for being wrong. I was capital W R O N G wrong. Josh Allen has not missed playing time when I thought he would. Right. But the fine point of that opinion is that with a partial UCL, it was just my feeling that they wouldn't want to risk it. Right. And because they can't win the Super Bowl without him. From a medical perspective, I always thought he could play at less than 100%. But mm -hmm. I thought he would not play. Because why, why would he? Why would they take that gamble? Yeah. Case Keenum's decent, right? Yeah. They have how, how can you know he's not going to get his elbow hit? Now, what's happened is, okay, let's just take this. Okay, after the Minnesota game, which was, you know, everyone was great with his output and whatever. But after the game, if you looked at his passing chart, Five passes greater than 20 yards, mm -hmm. one of five with an interception. Yep. And uh, he put up great fantasy numbers. Right. Most rushing. Yeah. He also admitted that they changed his game style and there were certain, the playbook was a little different and mm -hmm. that his elbow was a little sore and he had something he'd still have to deal with. Now look at his numbers this week. A slow start, but he didn't have 200 yards passing. Mm hmm. When's the last time he did that? Yeah, we can I mean, check on that, but that's not Josh Allen. Mm -mm. I'm not saying it's 100% because of his elbow, but certainly it's the play selections and what they're doing. I think what's smart is don't make him sit in the pocket. Don't, you know, if you are max protect the thing, don't make him take a third or fourth read on a long developing play right. where it increases the chance of his arm getting hit as he's coming forward. That's what you, you want to avoid. Right. Look, they, they beat Cleveland. They did, they did fine. Now the irony of that game is they played two games back to back in Detroit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> On a field that's uh, because of the, about cause of the thunder yeah. snow, <laughs> the thunder snow, they play in Detroit, but look, 
I tweeted something. Week yesterday. 16 of last year, by the way, for that under That's 200 yards. Under 200 yes. yards. Yes. So now we're we're going into slit film turf, right? Wandale Robinson tore his ACL, MetLife. Oh, my God, slit film. It's bad, bad, bad. And I want to clarify in the podcast, some people on Twitter are like, oh, I can't believe we were anti-player and not players. No, no. I've said from the get-go. You always say grass is safer. Grass yeah. is safer than the turf. But all I'm saying is it's not as big a difference as you might think. There is a difference. Grass is safer. Right. It's not like we're cutting ACLs in half if they're all grass fields. And um, but Just to go point, on that list on the ACLs, too, is Wandell, Shepard, uh, a cornerback, Blake Martinez, Jabril Peppers. There's some decent names at this MetLife. But, yeah, go on. Okay, so, so yeah, yeah. is there a similar list for the Jets? Yeah, that's what you're right. There's, they like, play in the same stadium. Not really. No. When we were doing the um, we were doing the data for our turf stuff for the last couple of weeks, um, the Rams, slightly more grass the rams than... the rams and chargers have more than not not on sofi right it's because there's one charger one rams that torn acl right it's two teams no so the the data you're referring to is at the midway point of the season one more acl tear on grass than on turf mm -hmm. and it's 16 teams playing on grass and turf even and yes detroit with the slit film was one of the league leaders with three acl tears mm -hmm. on that field but so was Hard Rock, grass. Miami Grass, Broncos, Grass. Mm -hmm. MetLife, yes, had three, now four. Yep. And SoFi had three ACLs. Mm -hmm. But two teams play in MetLife, so it's a net one and a half, yes, right? Yes. It's twice the exposures. Yes. Now, I'm glad there were no ACL tears in Cleveland versus Buffalo. Otherwise, that would have ignited the controversy. So you moved a game to a surface that the NFL PA leader says you want to ban. Right. <laughs> now, there had to be a grass field available somewhere on the East Coast or in that region. My point is, if you believe, and it's not anti-player, right. if you believe strongly in banning slit film turf, why did you not scream that you were moving a game to slit film turf? There should have been a tweet thing that they had already last week yeah you should right. have said no no yeah. why are we doing this this doesn't make sense can't we find another stadium with a better field right if you really believe that you should have like been all over that when that happened that's all i was saying it was not anti-player if whatever. you're on a stance you need to hard line the whole time i think yeah. that you dipped a little bit as a golden opportunity was, kind of yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> golden opportunity why are we if the league's worried about safety why are we moving a game to when we have other choices yeah you know uh, i don't know and is what it is but Yes, no question, grass is safer for a lot of different things, including, you know, for concussions when your head hits the ground, grass yeah. has a little more give. Right. You know, so uh, going off the Giants and MetLife, uh, Wandale Robinson, you mentioned torn ACL dump for the season, hurts their wide receiver depth further. Uh, they also got other, other key uh, positions dealing with injuries. Adoree Jackson had the more severe MCL sprain four to six weeks, I think they said. He's the number one corner. Number two corner is already on IR. Um, Evan Neal might have a chance to come back this week. I don't know if he wasn't ready Sunday, so I don't know if His back three extra hurt. days yeah. is helpful. But if not, then they're down to right tackle three. The Giants will have the biggest dip in their health score all right. week, uh, Delta. And it's cluster injuries. And they're mm -hmm. playing the Cowboys. That's a huge, huge division matchup for the standings and everything. Um, so wide receivers going into the game – the only quote healthy, and he wasn't hundred percent healthy guy, was Kenny Galladay. Well, yeah. Slayton too, but he's the fourth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Slayton's the fourth. Yeah, Richie yeah. James, you're getting further in the depth chart. Yeah, but yeah. the but of the quote of this projected starters to three, start season, yeah, the, the slot receiver and two wide receivers. So Galladay got a catch this week, and the crowd went crazy. Standing <laughs> ovation. <laughs> yeah, the Bronx cheer, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sarcasm, yeah. fun. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, I'm, what did he end up with? But uh, better uh, better week than Kadarius Tony, I'll tell you that. Oh gosh. So one to zero there, yeah. <laughs> so uh yeah, Galladay was the quote only guy standing. He's been a big disappointment. Yeah, even Wandell the, had nine catches for hundred last week, so that's a big yeah. And even even uh uh the the tight end is still out. Bellinger. Bellinger. Yep. yep. Right? So and you got no Shepherd pass catching options and uh yeah, now Wandell out. I mean, it's not we do good. our six score stuff. That's yeah, we hit them with multiple, yeah, all kinds of but stuff. But they may be worse at cornerback. They started with cornerback two out, then Adoree Jackson, their number one corner. I don't know what their manpower is, returning a punt. Yeah, right. 
MCL now, what, four, six weeks or yeah. more? He's really good at that. But I mean, Jacob had his argument in the thing. I don't know if you should, like, once the guy's a key part of the team, should he no longer do that, even though he's elite? Like, we just saw Cordell doing the kick return. Should he be doing that if he's an essential part of the team? Well, when you score a touchdown, the he answer should, is yes. yes. Yeah. When you get hurt, the answer is no, right? right? right. I mean, in retrospect. <laughs> You're right, yeah. But the, so then it was quarterback one, quarterback two. Then they were down quarterback three and four. And then they even had a safety playing corner, and he got hurt. Yeah, right? he went to the hospital for a jaw. Not good. To get reset or well, what? Yeah. And then uh, they've had some offensive line issues. You talked about Evan Neal and his backup. So there's some cluster injuries at wide receiver or pass catchers and cornerbacks, and then on the offensive line. So uh, uphill battle against Dallas, who's flying high after that uh, Minnesota shellacking. Yeah, the main one for Dallas is Micah Parsons. Uh, we saw his leg get caught late in that uh, win, that blowout win, and then uh, we said, "Look like how late? How late?" Like <laughs> when Four, it was, I saw him in at forty to three. It so was yeah. thirty-seven points. Thirty-seven three, and yeah, yeah. and uh, so we said injury mechanism was consistent with mild MCL. Surprised that he came back? Why did he come back? I, I don't know. Well, if we Cooper have those thing. answers. Cooper Cup got injured the last yeah. couple plays of the game. Like, why? At a certain point, why are we leaving these players in? I don't. I don't know. But. I don't know. Because you mean, can't they're... say no if Cooper wants to go. I he's going to go it's, in. It's right? not even that. Cooper... I think Parsons is more egregious. Cooper, Co- there was Cooper a Cup, score not... or two away. That's, that's there, forty-three. It was, it was, it was two score game Correct. at four minutes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. You can argue should you throw a screen pass? Maybe you got to throw more downfield. Correct. That wasn't out of reach. Okay. The 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 numbers are like a one percent, two percent chance, but you still had it. But at forty to three, I mean. What's the point? What's he going to do that's going to change the game? That's not. That's you already not, had two sacks. You're yeah. playing on a pick, short pick week. Up another sack or two? Yeah. No, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, pads, I'm pads. No, you're I right. Mean, <laughs> no, I, I agree with you. I mean, it didn't make any sense. But, but you have to understand, and this is not a criticism of any team or the Cowboys or what have you. When you're there, there's a lot happening. Yeah. Okay. So let me just play it out. As the team doctor, you're like, okay, your knee is stable. You tweaked your MCL a little bit. You're stable. You're cleared. Mm-hmm. The athletic trainers are cleared. So you tell your position coach you're, he's cleared to return. The position coach, is he really going to ask the coordinator or the head coach, hey, should I sit him? Or maybe they do sometimes, but you, do you saying, really yeah. expect <laughs> so in the heat of yeah. battle when a lot of things are going on that Mike McCarthy can pull himself back and say, wait, 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 wait. Is that something he could like, oh, he got cleared to return. Okay. I mean, you know, it's not time I think for a if they would have had a yeah. discussion, uh, should we keep out? They probably would have. There's got to be trust in everybody doing different decisions. Like you, when you were a doctor, you made sure everybody else was doing everything else. You can't do everything. Right? Everything <laughs> had its place right. and mechanism. We talked about in the Drew Brees. It was not my job to ever tell a coach the status. Okay. It was the athletic trainer's job, head athletic trainer's job, to tell a designated assistant coach who then relayed all information to special teams versus position versus coordinator. There was a, it's not a phone tree, a verbal game of telephone. There's tree. a line of communication that needs to be followed. There is a specific yeah, yeah, yeah. line of communication right. that is followed. Right. And it's never, it was never for me, me talking to the head coach. Mm-hmm. And it like, I mean, if I would have, if I would have, if I were in that situation with Mika Parsons, the most I would do is to go to the athletic trainer and goes, should we just hold him out? I mean, it's 40 it's to three. Yeah. 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 Then he would go and talk to and a talk to and a talk to. It would never be, hey, coach, shouldn't we pull it? I mean, yeah, no. You can't, you can't <laughs> play him, coach. Yeah, it's not that. <laughs> no. And, and there was another interesting one. We talked about this before. Keenan Allen, we talked about this. Once you clear a guy to play, you can have all the intentions of limited snaps, limited targets, whatever. It goes out the window. They got the helmet on, and game like you trip said, takes like over. he was definitely like slight decoy to start the game. Once Mike Williams left the game, the deep catches that you know, like that forty-six yard catch, that's a Mike Williams play, yep. right? But that, that's Keenan Allen in that situation because he's there, right? And as it turned out, I guess I didn't tweet it. I know I was saying in the room, I didn't think Mike Williams was, was ready. I didn't think Keenan was fully ready. Right. Obviously, Keenan did pretty well vet move he made but, some vet but mike moves. mike was clearly the right yeah 
he got re-injured early because you thought it was probably a week early for we him? thought four weeks this was yeah. at three, three yes. yep. yeah. so he's a week or two early depending on how you count it but i mean kudos to him for wanting to try it's I mean, not anybody's fault right but, Letting but early in know. the practice video we talked about that were leaked out by media or shown by me i was like yeah he didn't look right yeah yet. He said he was 200% ready. So that's why I even saw like, you know, I see when people players say that you look at the betting markets and stuff like his prop was like 10 yards higher just because he's saying that. But, you know, we go to our site and we, we don't have to share those uh, thoughts. right? I, I mean, yeah, 200% mentally ready and wanting to play <laughs> right. kudos, but uh, physically, I mean, I just didn't see it, but whatever. Right. Uh, um, last game on Thanksgiving is the Patriots and Vikings. Not too much injury wise on that. Just uh, Derisaw, as we mentioned earlier, the, the two concussions, they said they're going to be extra cautious with him. He's not playing Thursday. Uh, David Andrews on the Patriots side is the other one. Took a knee to the thigh, look like. And uh, we thought he had a chance to return, but still trying to gather more information kinda, on that, right? His status kind of up in the air with that thigh. Derisaw might be a big one. I know he's yeah. a rookie, but uh, he's already out. Not two back to back weeks. And, yeah. He's a key New part of their team. He's New a first England rounder. Yeah. Matt Judon, Judon sack. Yeah. And... <laughs> you can bet Judon's going to be on the left side, <laughs> on, oh, yeah. going against the left tackle. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Andrews, look, he got a in the thigh. Yep. We did see the rap sheet report that this is potentially season. Potentially yeah. season. Bad news. Bad news. Bad news. I don't think he broke his femur. I mean, I, I don't know what would look. If you ask me, more likely outcome. So I don't he, want to get, we don't want to guess, right? Yeah. He plays Thursday or he's done for the season. I'd say he plays Thursday is the more likely one of those two outcomes. Based on the analysis Obviously, there's saw. a lot in the middle, right? Right. And we saw just a distance video. We got need in the distal thigh. I don't see that as being horrible. Right. Of course, more video, more angles, and we'll see. He's tough, obviously. Well, there are going to be issues on their offensive line. Uh, Trent Brown picked up a little injury. He had Isaiah Wynn left, who's been moving mm -hmm. around from right tackle. Left. He's at left guard yesterday. He's doing some weird stuff. So, I mean, that's three offensive linemen hampered going into and Thursday. And yeah. they scored how many points? Yeah. <laughs> uh, ten. But it Three left, on uh, offense. Three on offense. I was going to say the last one was a punt return, game-winning punt return. Walk-off so. off, walk punt return. When's the last time you've seen something like that? It's pretty interesting. No, I, <laughs> I see poor Zach Wilson getting a lot of grief. I mean, you know, Ross Tucker kind of defending them a little bit, saying, like, you know, lay off a little bit, you know. But yeah, but I mean, you could argue. I mean, what did you say before? Lost. What's the Patriots' best thing to do? Confusing young quarterbacks. Like, I was telling Jacob, what's the, the most weapon, confused yeah. Zach Wilson's looked in the last couple of years. So, I mean, it happens. Bill's been doing it for a while. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> he knows. <laughs> Got a quick uh, coach speak for you. This one's a college football one. Big matchup this week against Michigan. Massive number, matchup. Yeah, number absolutely. three against Ohio State. Number two. Uh, Blake Corum, we saw, went out um, in the game. It was kind of an interesting process. He went out, looked bad, kind of had the foot trapped and, and knee hyperextension. Um, warmed up in the second half. Clearly couldn't cut on that left knee. And they gave him one run for five that he looked like a plotter and then didn't run him the rest of the rest of the day. But what's uh so well, after the game, Jim Harbaugh said structurally good, which is good news on, on Quorum's knee. And okay. but before that said no update on his status for Ohio State. So I'll translate that from Jimmy. <laughs> you know Michigan I, head coach Jim Harbaugh. I love Jim Harbaugh. <laughs> yeah. Like I could tell some Jim Harbaugh stories. I probably need a little permission from Jim. They're not bad <laughs> stories, but I mean, uh, I, I think Jimmy's great. I mean, he obviously was in San Diego for a while and he even coached at USD and yeah. then he went on to Stanford and, uh, you know, uh, look, small world. I've talked to, um, you know, I do some stuff with Rich Gannon and Rich Gannon was a Raiders player mm -hmm. when Jimmy spent his one year in the NFL as an assistant coach, as a quarterback's coach. Raiders, yep. And uh, we talked some on the sidelines and other things. Anyways, love Jim Harbaugh. I think he's great. Uh, a little offbeat kooky, but in a, in a, I think in a good way. But mm -hmm. anyways, here's my interpretation of that. Great news. It's not worst case scenario with ACL, MCL. Structurally intact, meaning no surgery, et cetera. But what that means is likely bone bruise. That's what we talked about, MCL versus bone bruise. So bone bruise is the deal, okay? Uh, I don't think he's playing. I don't think he's playing. Yeah, that, no, that's a huge one. Now, now let me ask this question just off the bat. Do you like the 12-team playoff, Carlos? Um, I want more. 
but, more than 12 <laughs> no i i would love a march madness style honestly that's psychopath stuff but uh <laughs> no i think um 12 is good um i think the eight wasn't that good i don't okay. i like more does 12 team playoff diminish an ohio state michigan game a little yeah because of the 12 team playoff they both make it oh, yeah. absolutely. right now the winner is out oh you're right oh, sorry the winner is in the loser yeah. is out any increase in the playoffs decreases the big singular matchups. i love the 12 yeah. team one so that like the Boise State or the TCU or the whatever can get in and mm -hmm. have a chance. Right. But I don't like it for this reason. But it takes, no, you're totally right. It takes away from the singular aura of each, you know, big game. Yeah. And and the problem with the 12 team playoff is like, okay, if, if you're a booster, are you going to all the games or are you just waiting till a bigger game to go? And then how does it affect you're going the to bowls? big games and you're showing all your friends, hey, I got you into the Ohio State, Michigan, right? Yeah. Exactly. No, no, but I'm just saying like, like, be it Michigan or Ohio State, if there's a 12 team playoff, are all their boosters and fans going to that early round playoff game or are they waiting to the semifinals they're waiting. and they're waiting. finals? They're waiting. Money, 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 yeah. goals and whatever. So <laughs> well, you're right. I, I don't mind the, the, the format, reason, but yeah. I'm just saying that that uh, you, it's hard to get people to travel multiple times like that, mm -hmm. right? Oh, no, um, for sure. So we'll see. We'll see how it works. Well, that's out. why March Madness is easier because they all have to stay in those cities for at least two to three games and then move over. So does that make it easier if they have to stay in a certain city for two, three games? Like, yeah, I don't know. Maybe the answer is like the earlier city. round games are now just an extra home game. Now right. <laughs> the favorite team plays at home. I don't so know. Saying, but then yeah. the Bulls don't like that. So. so, I mean, there's a lot of people to make happy <laughs> to do all a this. A lot of yeah. people to make happy. Absolutely. Got a weekly update on the New Orleans Saints quarterback situation i know Jameis uh made a lot of headlines this week saying that hurts his soul hurts his soul not yeah. to play and the code is to not have an injury be the reason you're replaced um so andy dalton to his credit only missed four throws against the rams 21 and 25 260 yards and three touchdowns they're mixing uh, Taysom hill in as the rushing option there he had nine rushes for 52 yards so dennis allen has a clear plan for the quarterback situation and it doesn't look like Jameis is in it. I am completely supportive of everything that Dennis Allen is doing, a hundred percent for selfish reasons because <laughs> Andy Dalton. We need him <laughs> in my one Scott Fish bowl. I mean, he carried like Tara. I, I have nobody left. <laughs> Everyone's out. Well, your other quarterback is Russell Wilson, and you could argue Dalton's better. <laughs> this week he was. I don't have well, anybody left. I mean, look. I mean, uh, Juju McColl. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> everyone was out. Everyone's out. It's like it's like I had a best ball team. I literally had six points that were on the bench total. Yep. Tyler Bass got me thirty-two points. Oh my god! Fantasy All Star like, this week. I was in the like, scoring week. Oh my god! Every year I got to convince you why a kicker is okay to draft in this. this Bass, oh my yeah. gosh! Yep. I mean, it, over two hundred points, and because of that. I mean, I won the first two years in this Scott like Fish. Like division, the, you the won division. division, yeah. yeah. And then lost in the playoffs. Got the bye, lost the playoffs. This year, I might sneak in as the wild card. Because of your points, yeah. Because of the scoring. points this week. Who knows? So I'm all for yep. Andy Dalton. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> um, yeah, it is unusual, right? But it's not unprecedented. It happens right. all the time. I mean, right. go back to Alex Smith and Colin Kaepernick. You, you were talking about Drew Brees not wanting to come out because Phil Rivers is going to take it. So it, uh, it's not and, like it doesn't and, happen. And... Uh, Justin Herbert and, and Tyrod Taylor. Yep. I mean, there's plenty of there's examples. There's worse examples. Of, yeah, then James, of, I mean, go back yeah. to Tom Brady and Drew Drew Bledsoe. Right. I mean, I like, James, you're that, not I, the first. Yeah, I'll say, that was, that's what I was thinking, too. Like, it's happened to many people. People have lost careers of it. But, you know, he's got to keep working and try to figure out how to get back to the I don't think what he said right? was bad. No, but... I, I think when you get the context of the full video, too, everyone just wants a sound bite of, oh, it hurts my soul not to play. And it seemed like he, he's blaming Dennis Allen. But if you watch the full press conference, he's, he's not blaming he's, him. He's, yeah. doing, he's doing the the – Player speak of I just got to do my preparation, be here I for the team when they call on me. Hope it hurts the soul of any player not to play. Yeah, he's a good leader. That's the one thing he that he was like, especially coming out of Florida State. That was the one thing they said he can rally the two troops. So if he can, if he's like that on the sidelines too, without playing them, that's good. Because yeah. yeah, I mean, all right, good for him. I'll get into a quick betting roundup and then we'll uh, jump to okay. beast of the week. Can I lead off before you do that on um, yes, the sir. Heisman stuff just to go into Blake Corum because we're going to betting now. Yeah. So the the Heisman with Hooker also down. We did mention Hooker with the AC, and Hooker, ACL yeah. tear. Um, Heisman. You odds. guys did good getting me video. I mean, I, I don't have time to watch all the college. It's Saturdays. Games. What I'm so much going Corum on. and then uh, Hooker. Yeah. Hooker with the ACL that we uh, probably were first to pseudo definitive. A lot say. of people were commenting on the field. I don't want to take us too off base, but. 
they were playing at uh, Southern Carolina University, Southern Carolina, and uh, looked like sand field basically. It looked like it, green it painted or sand. Yeah. Like it, maybe they just sodded the grass. I don't know what was going know. on there. I don't know. But, South Carolina. I don't know. I mean, yeah. the bottom line is. Uh, his knee gave out and indeed tore his ACL. So, so you got the, two people, the number two and three Heisman yeah. guys are out. Yeah. yeah. So they have Corum still on at plus 2000. That's because there's inklings that he might play, but we've already talked about him already. So you have the Ohio State quarterback at two and the um, USC quarterback at one minus 140. So now, oh, Caleb's one now. Yeah. They flipped around. Yeah. Oh, okay. So this is what I would say just from a betting standpoint. So you have the huge game with Michigan, Ohio State next week. If CJ Stroud, the Ohio State, has a massive game, those are the kind of games that push you above over people because USC they they're not as close to winning they use teams that's higher up in the standings so if th- this is the one game that can maybe jump them over so and he's at plus money right now so so, 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 got, so what he's saying parlay CJ Stroud Heisman to Ohio State <laughs> yeah because it's, go. it's correlated it's correlated <laughs> together I mean <laughs> I mean I don't know <laughs> Caleb Williams got two big wide receivers back Jordan no, that's and, uh, that's huge it's just Mario Williams so yeah they're seventh and their defense is terrible I just see Ohio State doing a lot. You know, the more you do now is the more they're going to go into this. But the big thing, like oh, we just talked about, on this one, you're yeah. taking two people off the board now, which is key, right? Who does USC have left? USC, yeah, we can look at this. I don't yeah. think they have any big opponents. I think that was that was the main one. Okay. We can double-check that. Yeah. But uh, best bet of the week, uh, we'll, we'll try some... Uh, Notre Dame. Some... They got Notre Dame next. Gotcha. Oh, so yeah. that's a big game. That's yeah. a big game. And they're jumping all the way to 13 after their bad start. Notre that's Dame. a big game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, so in game we were seeing so that. Wait, so you should parlay both, yeah. CJ Stroud yep. to Ohio State winning yep. to Notre Dame winning. Yeah, yeah. You got all <laughs> there you go. There's your connects. same game part. <laughs> I mean, or go the other parlay. way, right? <laughs> yep. And then uh, go Caleb Williams, USC, Michigan. You know, <laughs> they're correlated. Yeah, you put them together. Yeah, Jacob. Sorry, I was going off, <laughs> off base here. Uh, that's all right. I'm used to it. Um, Dallas. Plus one and a half in the second half after we saw Darisaw go out and they were lining up Parsons there. He got two sacks, was pressuring Kirk Cousins all day. It, just explain a little bit of the, the thinking behind that bet, Doc. Yeah, that's what we did for sick picks and glad you guys brought it up. Like, you know, when you have to throw and you don't have your left tackle and you've got a good defensive end against you. You're at a disadvantage. That's a disadvantage. Yeah, right. And... uh you know, it was already 23-3. I mean, you were 23-3 at half and then at ended half. 40 to 3. I mean, one more touchdown, you're you're done. You didn't tell me to do uh Minnesota to not score any points. That would have been a good one. We, we, we <laughs> definitely to- plus we, odds on that. We toyed with the under. Yeah, we did. We did with the under point. No, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> but the best one was was uh Dallas plus one. And and a half. Plus money, yeah. The other one was uh in game and and uh, Josh Jacobs rushing yards. Uh, well, that was interesting. That, that was that was it's live props, one. which is a lot of books are starting. Market, to, they're yeah. starting to toy with. Um, I've seen basketball a lot, and I've noticed that, and I've been doing that well because, like, you can know when people are going on the bench and stuff like that. But that one, like you said, we knew that the defensive tackle um, left with the hand, but nose tackle, so that's huge. We knew that they were going to start to um, dominating the line, and then what he needs. We also to- knew that three out of four linebackers are right for the Broncos. For yeah, absolutely. So. One of them's the main run stopper. So he had 65 when we hit the prop and it was 99.5. So we're like, all right, he's going to, I was, this is the one question I was like, do you think he's going to get to hundred? You're like, boom. Yes. Right. So we did all our analysis. 99. He ended up with uh 106, One, 108, something 108, like that. Yeah. yeah. So closer than we like. Yeah. We still made it. That's no, sure. absolutely. 109. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, but that, that's kind of stuff we're going to, I think we should, we're going to start doing a little bit more because uh, those live props are starting to add a more, well, well, more people. So, can, can we bet on odds on a on a coin toss being between a punter and a kicker? That's what <laughs> That's happened good. in that game. That was amazing. <laughs> that was time, that was yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I've never seen that before. A punter and a kicker going Wait, out for the overtime. They toss. were the two best players in the game, but yeah, that shouldn't have been. They that. did the most. <laughs> did the most. That's so, for sure. I'm just amazed. No, that was interesting for sure. <laughs> Bad beat of the week. Uh, we had Jonathan Taylor at the over on 85 and a half, uh, based on the. Eagles depleted uh, defensive line score. Um, and Ross it, Tucker helped us. Jordan Davis is a huge yeah. part of their run game. Yes. Ended with 84 yards. Had that for since like the eight minute mark of the fourth. And Indy had a fumble, I believe, late on. So uh, not not a great uh, not a great finish to that one. Do, do they do they correct sometimes and add a yard? They do. We, <laughs> they we do. do too. So uh, it need to be a lot. <laughs> I don't know. Just, just joking. He had a run for 28, you know, just do a little 29-30. Yeah. It's or fine. One, yeah. <laughs> one pitch that was a little bit no game. forward or yeah. even. That, no, for so that converts to a run instead of a pass. Reception. I like it, yeah. 
No, I'm like, just let's look back at film. <laughs> we can send it in. Yeah. No, but that was just a bad beat. Yeah, I think analysis is correct, and that's what we always want to do, right? We don't want to just give you a bet and it's 80 to 5, 85 and he gets 20 yards. Like, we, and the analysis is all but whack, we'll, right? But we did already with uh, Green Bay's poor performance. We've already hit that that season total right. under yes. 10 and a half. That yes. and uh, Saquon's future of rushing yeah. yards. Yeah. yeah. He, he reached 950, I think he's at. And Vikings was at nine and a half win total. They just need to win one one more time to get that. They didn't want to do that this week. <laughs> maybe they will. Uh, got beast of the week. Maybe maybe mine's an anti beast of the week candidate. Graham Gano struggling through an illness. The uh, Giants kicker said he had he needed four IVs for the game. I wish can, I could have recorded you break your that reaction. Down for us, Doc? Doc? I could have recorded your reaction. <laughs> that's not four separate times that he went to go get an IV. And that's correct? either an IV before the game and an IV at halftime, two bags each. Okay. Or four ivs at one sitting probably two before and two at halftime how long does it take to suck down one of those bags sorry for my well we do put it under pressure (laughs) and it gets forced in okay so you can easily get in one so it's not a trickle you're you're oh oh, no no, you're you're putting air this is where you get like for the raiders remember the air in the lung absolutely yeah I used to tell all our guys, you cannot spike an IV bag without taking the residual air out. Okay. Otherwise, the way the bag works, it fills up with air. So you don't know how much is liquid and how much is air. Right. As the liquid comes out, more air is pumped in. So it always looks full. Okay. And if you have air in the bag, it actually can get forced in. If it's just a drip, the air can't be forced into your, your veins or into your lungs in any way, shape, or form. Okay. So because they're pressure bags... So we, you know, uh, we even have an IV guy help us at home games, he, Dr. Spear. I mean, yeah, I mean, there's a whole, I mean, yeah. I mean, there's all these little things that you can't get tripped up on. Yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, he's, he's still kicking an extra field goal or extra point. He Should missed he, two. I thought if he be missed two, missed, yeah. could you figure out in warm up that he wasn't good and then yeah. activate Well, guy? what did you say about um, the Titans, right? When you said um, Verb Frable was like, oh, Bullock's a game time decision. He might make it, might not. You're like, no, he's not playing. You, can't, you only have one. <laughs> because you only have one. Right. So you can't have that guy be iffy. Or reheard it when you only have one, it doesn't work that way. There's right. no questionables for kickers. Yeah, you can't if you're if you're look. Oh, he kicks off one time and then now he can't kick anymore. You can't have that. Yeah, right. I mean, so you you can't have that as a maybe. Yeah, and uh, that's that's definitely one of the one of the big things. But uh, my beast of the week, I have to say, it's Kyle Pitts. Hey, go look at the hit again. He gets destroyed right in the middle. Yep. He gets up. He jogs and kind of high knees off. And everyone's mm-hmm. like, what are you guys talking about? It's a significant knee injury. Uh, I'm telling you, it's a significant knee injury. Right. You judge his reaction. It was like it was nothing. Mm-hmm. And, uh, oh, I think he might come back in. He's trying. No, now the word is significant MCL. Some are talking surgery. So I'm going to give it to Kyle Pitts. Right. That uh, you'd never even know he was hurt the way he came off the field there. I'll give it to Kyle Pitts this week and uh, the beast of the week, just the way that he reacted there. I like it. Absolutely. I agree with you. All right. Thanks for watching Pro Football Doc Sports Injury Central podcast here. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody. What do you guys got for Thanksgiving? I'm going to go to a restaurant. <laughs> no family down here. They're all eight hours up north, oh, okay. so I got to solo it. I got two dinners, so I got I to gotta plan for the week. Oh, Justin just popped up oh, the uh, Thanksgiving bag. Yeah, 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 I was waiting for, waiting for a moment. I didn't want to do it for the whole podcast, but at the end, uh, you mentioned Thanksgiving, so I thought oh, I'd throw it back. You were on the side, that. too. I like that. It's like, so wait, I heard, I heard Thanksgiving, that. and I woke up, and I was like, let's do this. I'm just yeah, saying the guy who's already got his Christmas tree up. Come on. I've got two two Christmas trees up right now. Yeah. that's uh, if We don't hold back here in this household, apparently. It's not necessarily 100% my choice, but I do support it once it's up. I'm like, okay. Looks kind of cozy. I get that. Yeah. Are they real trees or fake trees? No, they're fake. We're we're a bunch of phonies. Real, real trees would not last at all. <laughs> well, I don't know. Let me set trees up. I mean, we, right. I'm watching the World Cup. Sorry, I look going crazy here. All right. Anyways, uh, happy Thanksgiving and uh, looking forward to those slated games. And we'll chat again next week. And by the way, sign up for the newsletter. Thank you, guys. It's been very yeah, popular. Well, High open rate. Absolutely. Um, all the founders are, are Pro Football Doc and and get it already otherwise go to sicscore.com to sign up for free all we need is your email you don't need to put in anything else just so that you can get get in your inbox comes out what twice a week yep and we have a good guy taking care of it it's basically all our good content 
distilled down. I mean, what you'll get in it is, for example, Justin Field will be fine. Uh, Pitts, no. All the injuries with the Giants, et cetera. All right. Thanks for watching. Happy Turkey. And uh, we'll see you next week or before. <laughs>